It began as an idea. Take a viral video and refine it into a new combat sport. Many said it could not be done, but we believed in the process. From humble beginnings we grew, writing and refining the rules, hosting amateur events in bars and nightclubs, and developing the sport of slapping. During the pandemic, we were forced to produce our events in undisclosed locations. Warehouses, abandoned buildings, and empty event centers hosted Slap Fight Championship while millions of fans watched online. As the fan base grew, Slap Fight began hosting pay-per-view events and broadcasting internationally, spreading the sport to over 100 countries worldwide, continuing to build an audience for Slap Fight Championship. Now we have arrived, and we are no longer competing in undisclosed locations. After receiving over 1 billion viral views and hosting more events than all other slap organizations combined, we have become the top slap fighting promotion on the planet. With our loyal fan base in tow, we now embark on a new era in combat sports. This is Slap Fight. Good evening, fight fans, and welcome to the Inn at Grand Glaze Resort, one of our favorite slap fight venues located at the Lake of the Ozarks in beautiful Osage Beach, Missouri. We have invited 200 slap fight fans to witness the biggest super heavyweight tournament in slap fighting history. Over 2,800 pounds of man meat at the barrel tonight during Slap Fight 21 Heavy Hitters. In a tournament quarterfinal, we will see Slap Fight veteran Homewrecker returning to face newcomer Bulldozer in a battle of two giants, both from the Show Me State. But first, Team Neanderthal Super Heavyweight Juggernaut, the tallest competitor in the Heavy Hitters Tournament, makes his Slap Fight debut versus Atlanta-based slapper Full Freak. At five foot nine, the former pro BMXer is tonight's shortest tournament entry. Get ready, fight fans. It's five foot nine versus six foot four of the super heavyweight tournament. This first man, he's fighting out of Fulton, Missouri. He weighed a whopping 288 pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the slap fight barrel, Magni! All right, fight fans, we're gonna look here at Magni. He's the first competitor in our super heavyweight tournament this evening. Magni is a big, big man from Fulton, Missouri. He trains with legendary slap fighter Frank the Tank. And you'll see Frank the Tank in his quarter in just a few minutes here. Magni, six foot two, 288 pounds. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name is JT Tilly, and I'm so happy to be with you here tonight where we will be crowning the new number one contender at super heavyweight. And now, introducing his opponent, fighting out of Atlanta, Georgia. He weighed in at 323 pounds. Give it up for FN4 Free! And here he comes, guys. This is the FN Full Freak. This is a big, big, thick naked dude, man. Let me just go ahead and clarify he's not thick and naked, he's a thick naked dude. This man used to be a professional BMXer, and no longer anywhere in this world is there a bike that can hold him. So he's moved on to slapping F and full free. The first quarterfinal fight of the evening of the super heavyweights. All right, now, I gave the uh, officials a little bit of a suggestion here. I thought if we would have put, like, maybe a sandwich in, in on the barrel that we would have a little bit more intensity in the fight. But these two guys backstage, they were warming up, and I have to tell you, this is going to be another slobber knocker from Slap Fight Championship. Now, as our lead official, Kyron Bowen, goes through the rules, he's going to go ahead and, and make sure and uh, see that each one of the contestants has their cotton balls in place. And he's going to go ahead and do a coin toss, and that's how we're going to find out just who's going to slap first.
In the corner of Magni, we have legendary slap fighter Frank the Tank, the most experienced slap fighter on the planet with 19 fights to his credit. If Magni goes down, I have no doubt that Frank will catch him. But you'll notice behind Full Freak, we've got two catchers just to be safe. All right, so it looks like Magni wins the coin toss. He's going to slap first. And we're going to go down here to the barrel and listen in. Round one. Oh man, I gotta say that looked like a pretty solid strike. Uh, hearing it land, it sort of sounded like a club. I'm, I didn't get a good look at it from the broadcast booth, but it looks like Full Freak is fine. Oh, they did give him a warning for a club. Okay. A lot of the slap fans that have been watching for a while, you know that you can definitely hear the difference between a slap and a club, and there's a lesson. a hairdo messer upper crazy amounts of hair we have a warning like, oh. for stepping oh these guys are just going to go ahead freak. and return penalties with each other we've got a stepping violation here by full freak that means if he steps again during this contest he will return magni's going to put his glasses on get ready for this second step slap part Okay, there's conversation going on here at the barrel. I was trying to listen in. Uh, it looks like uh, our lead official, Kyron Bowen, is just telling me to clean it up a little bit. One, two, two. Oh, we got a big shot here from Full Freak. Line referee, line official Q Davidson watching the feed here. He's having a conversation here with the sanctioning representative, and it looks like, okay, it looks like Full Freak may have gotten it together here, and we have no penalty. I don't know if you can tell uh, on the camera here, but these are two massive, massive, massive men. Uh, massive men to the point that there's 620 pounds of man meat at the barrel right now. If things got out of hand, I would be fearful for Kyron Bowen. Here we go. Oh, man. That sounded like somebody dropped a piece of sausage. Wow. I always find it funny when the audience gives a golf clap after sort of a tepid slap. All right, here we go. Round three. Oh, my goodness. What a great slap. Oh, we've got a stepping we violation. Stepping violation. Oh, I sure hate that. All right, we've got a stepping so, violation here, which full means Full Freak is turn. going to lose a turn, and that's upsetting. That's a difficult thing here. Uh, losing a turn costs you just a little bit of a uh, of a, a chance at winning by decision. Now we're going to have to see a, a knockout by Full Freak or a mistake made by Magni, or Full Freak may be in trouble. Full Freak just demonstrating his agility here. I'm not sure Magni saw him. 
Well, these are some big, big boys here. Let's see if Magny can get the knockout. No knockout. That's probably due to the fact that Full Freak has no neck. I mean, he might have a neck, but it's definitely not on stage with him tonight. All right, Magny with his second slap here. Oh, not a bad shot. Sounded a little bit like a club, but it, it didn't look like a club. It's just so much face meat with full frequency. I, I just don't really know exactly uh, it, where the slap lands because sometimes the hand goes so deep into the cheek that the cheek closes up around it. All right, we're in the bottom of round five here. Full frequency dancing around a little bit. Here we go. Oh my goodness, full freak pulling it in here. That was the best slap of the match, but I have to make sure here that wasn't a club. Oh, we got a step here. Referee Kyron Bowen is explaining the situation to Full Freak. Magnet was definitely affected by that slap, but of course he was. There was a stepping violation. He's having a quick conversation with Frank the Tank, and I would say if I were in a slap fight, I would definitely want Frank the Tank behind me, not in front of me. Unless I could go first, in which case, Frank can get this smoke, man. And when you hear this, Frank, I ain't playing. One of the things I find interesting about Full Freak is what an incredible athlete he is. This guy used to be a, a BMXer, a pro BMXer actually, and his size and shape is kind of deceptive. This guy has a trainer and he trains full time for slapping and uh, this is his first chance to put it in action. So here we go, round six. One, two, three. Oh, that was a good slap. You know, I wasn't that intimidated at first when I met Magni, but now that I see him in action, this is kind of an intimidating guy. And I see the, the influence here from the, the Norse mythology. Some of his tattoos are pretty killer. He's got some cool stuff on his knuckles. I asked him about it at the weigh-ins last night, and, uh, and he's got some pretty interesting messages on his body. But now that he's in the slapping zone, he's a, he is a little bit intimidating. Here we go, round six. Oh, man. But full freak, man, this guy just has a mallet head. It's, it's interesting with some of these guys, man. These guys are so tough that come, come to us at Slap Fight Championship. They can slap each other in the face and then be, be best friends at the bar at the after party. They laugh at each other. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Oh, and of course, a little trash talk coming across the barrel from Magni. This is a scheduled 10 round fight as the, as the uh, officials. We have another violation of stepping. Oh no. Oh, this, this, this is a big turd sandwich for full three here. Okay, it's being explained to Full Freak now that he cannot pivot his foot. This is a very difficult thing for beginning slappers, the pivoting of the feet and the stepping penalties. Uh, I know Full Freak is probably uh, not doing this on purpose at all, but when you train, sometimes you don't have a guy looking directly at your feet and watching for movement. Unfortunately, a lot of movement, so uh, I think he's going to lose another turn here. Let's find out. Not a bad slap. Now the barrel move there, uh, usually when the barrel moves, it's because there was a step. I don't think there was a step there. I think that was just the hip movement of Magni. All right, Full Freak has lost his eighth round turn. Here's that second slap. My gosh. Here in the room at the Grand Glaze, you can hear these slaps echoing off the back walls. I don't know how they're translating to you at home, but. These are some heavy, heavy slaps. And I want you to keep in mind that the winner of this match will fight again and the, in the co-main event to see who will become the number one contender at super heavyweight. Now look at the profile of Full Freak. I mean, this is going to be a, 
a near impossible task knocking this man out. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Oh, my goodness. Wow. I'm going to find Magni after the show and shake his hand and let him know I'm sorry for underestimating him. That was crazy. The only thing I noticed with Magni here is that he's starting to turn sort of a bright shade of pink. Uh, but but Full Freak sort of showed up in that same shade, so it's it's kind of uh, it helps with the lighting. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, a little bit of a flinch. The slap still landed, so I'm not sure they're going to call that. Okay, seems like Kyron Bowen has just given a little bit of a warning here to Full Freak. Right, Full Freak's going to get his footing here. We're in the final round of the competition. Unfortunately, Magny's running away with this due to penalty. This is the last shot for Full Freak. Oh, no! And he goes down! Holy smokes! Wow! Whoa! This man was losing the fight. This was his last opportunity to pull it home, and this may have just been a win for Full Freak. Holy smokes. All right, the room's very quiet now. We're just going to make sure that Magny's okay. He has 60 seconds to clear his head and get back to the barrel. If he can deliver a slap, he may have done enough to win this fight. Oh, my. is what happens when you've got a couple of debut slappers at the barrel. Usually takes a few rounds to hone it in. And holy smokes, what a knockdown by Full Freak. Okay, Magni's going to go ahead and try to stand up, but it looks like he's going to slide off the platform. Ladies and gentlemen, we may have a winner here. Oh my gosh, moving into the final round with a last second, last round KO. It looks like it's full frequency. We're going to tune in here and see uh, the official announcement of the winner from our announcer, Dallin Getley. I'm going to listen in here. Okay, I've just been notified that it... Magni made it back to the platform within that 60 seconds, and now that means that we're going to the judges' scorecards. Uh, that's fair. I, I didn't catch that right away, but now I can see the judges and the lead officials are all huddled together. Wow. What a fantastic leadoff to tonight's show. Wow. All right, it looks like we're going to have a decision here rather than a knockout. Excuse me. Apparently, that 60 seconds was all it took for Magni to get back to his feet and return to the barrel. I see, I see our announcer, Dallin Getling, heading to the platform. So I'm going to go ahead and listen in. We'll see who the winner is. Ladies and gentlemen, we do have a winner, but let's give it up for both of these warriors. That was a great, great first fight, guys. It was close, but your winner, Magni! Holy smokes, a win for Magni. Wow! Magni. All right, Magni, can you talk with you? Just go ahead and use that barrel. I'm going to get on this side of you, brother. Okay, so go ahead and use that barrel to keep yourself steady. If you need to use me, <laughs> do it. All right, man. So I don't know, you got so many more slaps than he did because of those violations. I thought maybe his strategy, because you said something about your hand hurting, was to maybe hurt your hand and let you just keep hitting him. But how's your hand feeling, brother? It hurts a lot. <laughs> it does? Okay. All right. How's your head feel? Eh, not too bad. Okay. So what we're going to do here is I think you're going to evaluate. You won, so you're moving on to the next round, to the, to the finals, actually. But I think that you need to get evaluated by the medical team to see how you're doing, if you can advance. If not, maybe we'll have him step in, but you are the winner, so if you can, you will advance. Congratulations, great fight. Great fight. You need help with him?
As you can see, this is a battle between two big, big men. Bulldozer from Lebanon, Missouri, six foot three, and the bouncer from El Paso, Texas, six foot two. Each of these men is well over 320 pounds. Bulldozer is a blue collar worker. He's a proud veteran of the United States Army. The bouncer is a big supporter of, of the U.S. Army. He's a, a member of Team Okuma. Team Okuma. A former bouncer, he's watched the, uh, the Slap Fight Championship for many, many years, and he told me last night he's very excited to be here. All right, the coin toss goes to Bulldozer, and he will slap first. All right, we're gonna find out a lot about the bouncer here. We're gonna find out if he can take a big shot. Oh, actually, it looks like maybe the bouncer won the coin toss. Pardon. Holy smokes. Okay, folks, don't blink. These are two big men. Here's the windup. Oh, no! Wow! It sounded like a shotgun went off here in the venue. But Bulldozer took the shot and he ate it. Holy smokes! Now that's going to be one knockdown for the bouncer, and that's just because Bulldozer fell back into the arms of his corner we man. Do have a warning for stepping. Oh no, and we've got a stepping warning for the bouncer. That means that will not count as a, as a knockdown at all. Instead, that will count as a wasted slap by the bouncer. Now, if he steps again, he will lose a turn. And as you saw in the last contest, that can make the difference at Slap Fight Championship. Here we are in round two. Let's see what bull, excuse me, bottom of round one. Let's see what Bulldozer has to offer. You can see his hands shaking. This is his first slap. Oh, not a bad slap, but this is a big, big man. And it's going to take a little bit more than that to put him down. Folks, I'm joined here by legendary people's champion of slap fighting, Frank the Tank. And Frank, what do you think about these big guys? This is, uh, I'm so glad that I dropped weight classes because <laughs> I do not want to be involved with these two. Now, confidentially. One, two, three. Oh, my goodness. Confidentially, I, I've heard who your, your pick is in this fight, and I know who mine is, and I, I may have switched mine after that first we couple of exchanges. Lots of turn by the bouncer. Oh, no, we've got another stepping violation. Bulldozer looks like he doesn't like it. The bouncer's going to lose his turn here, which means the bouncer will not have his round three slap. That means Bulldozer will have his round two and his round three slap, excuse me, round three and round four slap in a row. And that's, if Bulldozer returns to the barrel here, he looks like his bell is rung pretty good, and if he can't return, we may have a no contest here. In most other combat sports, uh, an illegal strike that ended the fight would result in a winner for the downed opponent. However, at Slap Fight Championship, it's just a no contest, and that's simply because we don't want any of our fighters accentuating an injury or a big slap in order to just get the win. So we're going to listen in here for a few seconds and see if Bulldozer returns to the barrel. If he does, he's going to have two slaps against the bouncer. And Frank, that's never happened to you. you I, as I recall, you've never, ever had a penalty that, that you were violated and lost a turn. Is that correct? Yeah, you're correct. Nin no 19 fights. And, and uh, I have to say, I, I've seen you have a, an extra slap a few times in competition. It feels good when you're swinging twice, doesn't it? Sometimes it doesn't feel good because hitting that person an extra turn it really hurts your hand hurts depending your hand. on the person. Okay, I see. Okay, Bulldozer's back at the barrel here. He's going to go ahead and take his round two, bottom of round two slap. Here we go. Oh, my goodness. And the bouncer eats it. Holy smokes. These are big, big shots, folks. Wow. Okay, it looks like maybe lead official Kyron Bowen may have noticed a club here, and so there may be a warning for Bulldozer. Okay, he's giving him a, just a quick lesson in the rules here, Frank. You know, sometimes in the heat of battle, it's easy to throw a club and not really think about what you're doing until it's too late. Would you agree with that? I would. Lining up is very important in this. You know, I noticed uh, these guys from El Paso, they're fighting in cowboy boots. Our former light heavyweight champion is away filming a reality series 
uh, with Dana White. It's called Power Slap, and, and while he's away, we're going to have a vacant title, but these guys are all following his lead with these cowboy boots. Oh my gosh. Uh, Bill, Bulldozer's throwing some big, big meat here, but the bouncer is just eating these shots. Now that one staggered him just a bit, but he stepped back and then he stepped right back to the barrel. It, it's funny to see all these guys with, with cowboy boots on us. This was something that never happened until about three years ago. Wolverine showed up with boots on and ever since it's become a fad. We do have a warning for clubbing. Oh, we've got a clubbing warning here. Once again, these guys, these are their first appearances at the barrel. We had an extensive training camp with these guys. We went through the regulations. Of course, Frank the Tank, he now works for Slap Fight Championship as a fighter liaison, and you work with these guys pretty heavily. They know the rules, and they understand what their job here tonight is. Yes, they do. So this conversation they're having with Kyron Bowen is just a little bit of a, a reminder of what they learned during the training camp with Frank. I was there as well, and I, I saw these guys putting in some serious work, and uh, a lot of these guys had some pretty sloppy technique until they worked with Frank. And uh, I think maybe we're seeing uh, probably a little bit of a sloppier fight than we want, but it's much better as a result of your help, thanks. So Frank, Frank, so thank you. Okay, we've got to make sure Bulldozer has his towel. The towel is there for a few reasons. Number one, because some of the big men can't reach their hands behind their back and also keeps their back behind, their hands behind their back. And a shot to the top of the forehead. That's definitely an illegal strike. That's going to be a club, and it looks like Bulldozer's been clubbed a few times here. So I would imagine that the bouncer's going to lose a turn. A club and a step. Okay, they're going to call the step because calling the step is a loss of a turn immediately. And now Bulldozer, if he can stay in this fight, he's going to likely win by decision. But when we first began Slap Fight Championship, the reason for the towel was because most of the men were super heavyweights in those days, and they couldn't reach. And Frank, I, <laughs> I remember that you were one of them. I remember the first show, we gave you the towel because you couldn't touch hands uh, behind your back, and I think you came in at about 320 pounds. Is that right? Yeah, I did. It was. It's very hard to put your hands behind your back when you're that big. Yeah, I, I wouldn't know anything about that, actually. But but uh, now, what do you weigh today, Frank? I'm 228. So slap fighting, you've lost 100 pounds training. Yes. Wow, congratulations, Frank. Thank you. You know, I'm noticing here, there, there's some conversation here with the boots, the boots of, uh, of the bouncer, and uh, I, I don't know what the conversation was. It could have just been a, a <laughs> hey, I like your boots, but one of the officials just pulled him to the side and said something to him. I think it may be because inside of his boots, it's possible that he's got just a little bit of foot movement, and they want him to know that he's, uh, that he's being watched here. Bouncer's a very, very tough guy. He's a big, big guy. Uh, we are here at the Lake of the Ozarks in Osage Beach, Missouri, and I looked out of my balcony this morning. The water is 30 degrees, and the bouncer was in the lake taking a 20-minute ice bath. This is a hardcore guy, but he's lost a lot of turns here due to penalty, and he is in trouble if Bulldozer can keep himself in the match. Now, what's Kyron saying to him now, Frank? Uh, it looks like he's talking to him about hand placement. Oh, we've got a big shot here. The bouncer stumbles. He's going to stagger back to the barrel. This is a scheduled 10 round fight. And here we are in round four. And the bouncer shows his first sign of weakness. We do have a clubbing violation. Oh, no. Oh, Bulldozer looks upset. I don't know if you can hear them at home, but they're having a real serious conversation here. Bulldozer says, I'm sorry, I'm not trying to club you. And the bouncer said something like, Okay, I've just been handed a note, Frank, that Magni needs to talk to you in the dressing room. So we're going to go ahead and, and say goodbye to Frank the Tank for just a few minutes, which is good because it's difficult for me to get a word in edgewise when Frank is on the mic, and it's quite irritating. Uh, but Frank means well. Okay, so going back up to the platform here, I'm noticing that uh, there's a, a real serious conversation going on with the bulldozer. 
It looks like he's going to stay in the looks like he's going to stay in the match. I'm not really sure who's winning this fight. I'm kind of looking around the room here. I'm seeing a lot of the officials having conversations about uh, the fact that both of these guys have lost their round. Oh, their round five turn. I see. So we're going to completely skip around here. What a crazy fight. I'm, I'm interested to see how this goes down. Great sportsmanship here. The bouncer sticking his towel in the back of his pants. Let's make sure we don't use that towel again. All right, all these penalties, sooner or later, they're just going to turn on Kyron and take him out. Here we go. Round six. And that was definitely a club. And now I can see that the medical team is starting to surround the platform. And things are getting serious here. I can tell that the bouncer didn't mean to throw that club, but that was just as much of a sucker punch as I've seen in a while here. And I'm not so sure that the doc is going to let this continue. I can see he's right up on the platform. I think most people know, but that was a clubbing violation. <laughs> Our announcer, Alan Gettling. Funny, funny guy. I met Alan Gettling. He was doing a, an improv comedy show. Uh, I've watched him go undefeated in mixed martial arts. He's a kickboxer. He's a jiu-jitsu. I believe he's got a blue belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And uh, he's so dens desensitized to combat sports that he's almost the entire peanut gallery at our shows himself. That's Dallin Getling. The fans are really concerned here with this fight. This is uh, getting close to unsafe. And so we've got the doctor. He's talking to the regulators here. And it looks like these guys are under heavy scrutiny. But I, I have to be honest, I'm, I'm looking at Bulldozer now. And he seems to be cognizant here. His eyes are clear. And it doesn't seem like he's got any intention of dropping out of the fight. Last night at the weigh-ins, I spent quite a bit of time talking to the bouncer. And I know he's just a really nice guy. He's a really friendly guy. And I can't imagine that this would be any sort of a strategy. I, I feel like he just has a little bit of an experience. It's a little bit of a, a chink in his armor here. He's in a tough spot here. He's lost some turns. He's landed less strikes. He's got some violations. Uh, I, I feel like we're in a position here where Bulldozer Bulldozer may win the fight and then opt out of the tournament. Frank the Tank is back with his student Magni now in the back room. He was handed a note just a few minutes ago. He was told that Magni, although he won the fight, he may have ch chosen to opt out of the tournament. And I would agree with that as a strategy. I think it's better to fight another day. So that means Full Freak is likely to move to the finals and face the winner of this slugfest. All right, some little fan trying to stoke the crowd. All right, the crowd here at the Inn at Grand Glaze. They were a little reserved when we started, but this fight has woken them up. Here we go. Oh, that was a crazy bad slap. I hate seeing that from Bulldozer. He's had some decent, decent power. Uh, now we're getting a little deep in the fight. He's been uh, fouled a few times. I hope that didn't affect his power, but that was probably the worst slap of the night so far. Giant, giant man here. Nearly 700 pounds of man meat at the barrel during this fight. Oh no. I think what we're seeing here is there's a we've got a little bit of a decline in power here by Bulldozer. I keep noticing that he's touching his right shoulder and there may be an issue with his shoulder here. One of the things that the uh, the casual fan doesn't know about the sport is the trauma to the hand and the and the the uh, trauma to the shoulder. They mostly think that the the pain is the face, but it's not just the face. It's sometimes the hand that causes the the tap out. Here we go. Two, Round eight. Three, oh, man. I think if that was a clean slap, we, we might have a winner, but it sort of looked like a club, in which case. We have the, a clubbing violation. Oh, my gosh. Oh, man. This is going to be a tough.
tough one here for the bouncer. I believe the doctor would probably stop this fight if the bouncer hadn't just lost his last turn. The bouncer has lost his round nine turn. So that means that Bulldozer will get his round nine and round 10 slap in a row. And if the bouncer can withstand those two slaps, he will end the fight with one last opportunity, which I just don't know about this fight. I have to say right now, the doctor is over talking to the commissioner. I don't even see Bulldozer, I have no idea. Oh, there he is. Okay, he was over maybe talking to the medical team. I'm not quite sure. Can't see Bulldozer, so I, I know he's talking to his corner man. And again, I, I have to say how impressed I am with the resiliency of Bulldozer. He doesn't look like he's even considering dropping out of this fight. I, I don't know that there are many men that would continue after taking so many bad, ugly shots from the bouncer. The bouncer is a massive guy. I mean, a big, big guy. Going over some strategy with his corner man. Bulldozer's ready to step back to the barrel. This bout is about to resume. I can't believe it's going to go the distance. If I were full freak backstage watching this fight, I would think that it's great for him to see these guys beating up on each other. Full freak seemed to be just fine when I spoke to him after the fight. And uh, this may be a good thing for him that there's so much damage being done in this fight. I'm not sure what the holdup is. I think the doctor is uh, having a conversation with the sanctioning representatives. Lead official Kyron Bowen talking to his people in the pit. The pit at our shows is full of fight fans from slapfight.live. You can go to slapfight.live and learn about our company and our roster of fighters. And every once in a while, you'll have an invite to a show in an undisclosed location. That's what's happening tonight. We've got about 30 or 40 fans in the pit, and they're having a great time, and uh, Kyron Bowen's just kind of telling them to uh, gather up and get ready for the end of this fight. All right, so Bulldozer checking his placement. Here we go. Oh. All right, so Bulldozer's landing clean, clean shots. He doesn't have a lot of power but he's landing clean shots, and if he can make it to the end of the match, I'm almost positive he would receive the judge's decision just based on penalties. So at this point, it's about making it to the end. Now, Bulldozer knows he might just have one final shot. I know that's on his mind. I've spoken to him enough to know that he is a strategist. Not a great slap. I'm noticing that the, the right pinky and ring finger on Bulldozer is taped, and that's not typical at Slap Fight Championship. So I'm not so sure if there was a pre-existing injury, and maybe that is affecting how hard he's able to slap near the end of the match here. Now Frank the Tank is joining me again. He's coming back from the dressing room. Any news, Frank? Yeah. What's going to happen? All right, so Frank, Frank has just joined me. Let me know that Magni is dropped out of the tournament. Oh, that was a big flinch. The slap landed on the ear because Bulldozer flinched so much. I hope they don't penalize the bouncer for that. May not have heard me. Frank was just letting me know that Magni is back in the back, and after winning the first quarterfinal of the Super Heavyweight Tournament, Magni has chosen not to continue. Full Freak will move to the final round of this tournament where he will likely face Bulldozer if he can make it to the end of the match. One, two, three. Okay, uh, another, as another point for a, a strike landed. It wasn't a big, powerful strike, but it was a strike nonetheless. <laughs> okay, so maybe that's the end of the match there. I, I was under the impression that the bouncer had one final slap. I, I'm learning here that maybe he, he had won the coin toss. I don't know what's happening. We're going to listen in here and see what's happening.
okay, I guess I've just been informed that the bouncer did win the coin toss. He did go first, and for that reason, we are at the end of the match. And I don't think there's any question who the winner is going to be, but I see uh, our, our announcer, Dallin Getling, heading to the platform, and so I'm sure he's about to announce the winner. Ladies and gentlemen, we had another 10 round slap fest. Let's hear from both fighters. the winner now uh you took some shots you took some hard shots or actually violations as well how you feeling feel good really yes sir Woo! well that's great man because you got another fight coming up yes sir all right well i'm gonna i'm gonna i had some questions i wanted to ask you but i'm gonna wait till after this next fight to ask you about them okay yes, sir. all right congratulations great fight man go go get your breath and come back here all right bulldozer All right, folks, we've got another last-minute replacement here, the Mexicutioner, a crazy new character that we met last night at the Slap Fight weigh-ins. He is making his Slap Fight debut tonight, five foot, eight inches tall, 238 pounds. The Mexicutioner is gonna fight another newcomer, Okuma915. This is Okuma915, first fight at Slap Fight Championship, but he's coming into our promotion with a 2-0 amateur record from a little amateur league that we've recently absorbed, Hack and Slap USA. Voy a estar en el Slap Fighting Championship. Me voy a mandar a este güey atrás para el Paso, Texas. Y el Paso Real va a dar unas pinches cachetadas. ¡Wah! Y cuando va a comer unos pinches tacos y unas cervezas Corona. ¡Qué vole! All right, I just seen the Mexicutioner's interview. I don't know what he said, but me and my team are about to show a Slap Fight Championship what the Cactus Slap's all about, representing El Paso. Yeah. 
And there he is, ladies and gentlemen, the executioner. This guy comes to us all the way from Branson, Missouri. And now you're getting a good look at Okuma 915. Okuma 915 holds a, an amateur title in slapping. He's got a record of 2-0 and as an amateur. This is his debut at Slap Fight Championship, and he has a crazy competitor to deal with tonight. Okuma 915, he's a cool cat. He's got a lot of power, and he's got good technique. But tonight he's fighting an unknown slapper, the Executioner. Now, of course, the executioner is going to have to be unmasked now. And there we go. He's going to go ahead and reveal that beautiful smile. All right. The executioner versus Okuma 915. Here we go. All right, folks, let's take a look at the rules of slap fight. First off, no clubbing. All competitors must land their strikes with an open hand. The heel of the hand may make contact, but cannot extend past the chin. Next, no stepping. Feet must be planted shoulder width apart, and there can be no pivoting or stepping when striking. And finally, no flinching. Small reactions are allowed, but any movement that affects the power of the strike is a foul. All right, here we are back at the barrel with lead official Kyron Bowen. And he's just giving a quick rules meeting to our competitors. It's each of their first competition at Slap Fight. The executioner has several mixed martial arts battles to his credit and Okuma Slap Fighting credit. All right, so the coin toss is going to go to the executioner, and we're going to find out right now what kind of power he has in those big, crazy, broad shoulders of his. And here we go, round one. All right, just gonna check his placement here, of course, at Slap Fight Championship. The heel of the hand may make contact with the chin, but it cannot extend any deeper into the face. The executioner knows this. He's just going to triple and quadruple check, apparently. Maybe he just likes the feeling of Okuma's cheek. I don't know. Here we go. Not a bad little slap there. I'm not sure if there was a step. Okay, looks like it was clean. I did see the executioner working on his stepping with Frank the Tank backstage. It looks like he's been successful in that. Okuma has 60 seconds to return to the barrel. Looks like he doesn't need the break. Bottom of round one. One, two, three. And Okuma with a big, big shot. Oh, the executioner felt that one. Okuma with a little bit of a, a different style than we've seen here. And kind of a lanky build and kind of a, a crazy windup, but that was definitely a a powerful shot. It looked like it was a little janky, maybe hit near the eye, the forehead, but but uh, nevertheless, it looks like it it looks like it's going to be accepted as a clean strike. So we're going to move into round two. Okuma 915 does have a team. He's got several slappers that he coaches in El Paso, Texas, all of whom have signed with Slap Fight Championship. The executioner has retired from mixed martial arts, and he wants to pursue slapping full time as well. Let's go. Oh, another little shot there, but Okuma just eats it. The fans love Okuma 915 and Mexicutioner. It's hard to tell who the favorite is here with the fans. We're going to move right into the bottom of the second round. Okuma's going to check his placement here. Here's your wind up. Oh, 
Oh, Kuma with another big, big slap. Wow. We got a little bit of blood here. I've actually, I've actually seen the uh, executioner compete in mixed martial arts many times. I doubt he'll quit from a bloody nose, but it is important to notice that that's only the second slap he's eaten tonight. The executioner doesn't seem to like the road rash of the slap game. He's asking uh, lead official Kyron Bowen if it's okay to continue if he's bleeding. And of course it is. The executioner is always a showman, and he's going to fit in very well here at Slap Fight Championship, providing that he learns how to put his cap on properly. The audience doesn't care about the blood. They're ready for this match to continue. Okuma looks hype. All right, the executioner's ready. We've got two tough heavyweights at the barrel, both trying to make a name for themselves at Slap Fight Championship. Round three, executioner checking his placement. Here's your wind up. One, two, three. Yeah. Oh, not bad. Yeah. Okuma 915, very impressive. Great chin, good technique, good defense. Glad to we have, have him at Slap Fight Championship. Okay, as you heard, the executioner has just been giving a warning for stepping. Okuma doesn't need to break. Action here. We're at the bottom of round three. Being joined again by Frank the Tank. Frank's checking on his fighter. How's Maggie? One, He's doing two, good. Good. Oh, another good shot. The executioner. He may not be falling from the blunt force trauma, but he does have a little bit of a swelling on the on the left side of his cheek. A little bit of road rash there, and it's starting to set into him that he's in a different kind of fight than he's experienced before. That's tough, isn't it, Frank? You feel the burn like you would with a typical slap when you're up there? Yeah, the skin-to-skin -skin contact definitely makes a, a new Ooh. sensation, new feeling. Uh, so let me just repeat what you said to me. You're saying that the skin-to-skin -skin contact creates a new sensation for you. Yes. Uh, it's not a new sensation for me, but uh, I'll pray for you, Frank. Okay. All right. Frank the Tank just letting us know that his fighter Magni is in the back, and he has been okay. He's been checked out by the, the, uh, the, the medical team, and I think he's okay, but he is going to withdraw from the tournament. Am I correct? Yes, you're correct. Okay. We'll see Magni again another day perhaps, but tonight in the tournament final, we'll see Full Freak versus Bulldozer, and I can't wait for that fight. But as for now, we're going to step back to the barrel here with Okuma versus the executioner. Now, if you'd like to if you'd like to bet on this fight, you can go to DraftKings and you can bet on this fight, the winner or the over under on which round the fight will end in. Betting in select territories only. Go ahead and check your local listings and see if you can bet and we'd love to have you entertain the idea of supporting our sport that way. Stepping back to the barrel here. I would have thought this was a mismatch if I'd have saw these guys just walking up together. They kind of look like the number 10. Oh, Okuma eats another shot, only this one was kind of to the jugular. We have a flinch warning on Okuma. Okay, they're gonna warn Okuma for flinching. If he does flinch again, though, he will lose a turn. Yeah. Round four. One, two, three. Oh, another good shot. Okuma with some great, great slaps tonight. I think what we're seeing here is the birth of a new talent at the heavyweight division. And I'll tell you now that last night at the slap fight weigh-ins, we noticed that Okuma is capable of making both light heavyweight and heavyweight. 
So I would love to see this man bounce back and forth between weight classes. I've also got to say that you cannot count out the Mexicutioner. I've seen this man down and out in several fights. I've seen him turn it around several times. And uh, I'm sure that that's on his mind now. You can see a little bit of road rash there on his left cheek, a little handprint of Okuma to take home with him later tonight. But you can also see that that red mark is right in the strike zone. What do you think about this guy, Frank, the Mexicutioner? Have you spent much time talking to him? I've spent a little bit of time working with him. Um, he seems like a good guy, has uh, a little bit of knowledge from watching our videos, and seems like he's going to do fairly well. He just needs to practice a little bit more. I do believe he's still in this fight. I just don't know if he's winning at this point, but we do have several rounds left. I think we're halfway through. Lead official Kyron Bowen is telling him to tuck his thumb in. Oh my goodness. He looks like he's throwing with power, but that looked a little bit deep. I don't know if they're going to call a clubbing violation there or not. They're talking about it. We have a stepping violation. Loss of turn of execution. All right, with a stepping violation, it does look like the Mexicutioner may, may lose a turn. And uh, Okuma seems to be fired up about that. He's going to get to throw two slaps in a row here, round five and round six. Okay, I'm not so sure that they're going to they're gonna need to turn that hat around backwards. That might be an issue here. Well, maybe Kyron's going to let that hat stay on. We'll see. The executioner stumbling around a little bit. His equilibrium is off. His equilibrium is off, and he's shaking the cobwebs out. I know this guy. I don't think he's going to pull out, but my goodness, he's getting beat up a little bit here. What a slap. Really impressed with Okuma 915. I've been speaking to this guy for the better part of the year. I've been watching him for a long time, and... Uh, I'm really glad we've got him here at Slap Fight Championship. I think he was probably the number one amateur in the nation for the last two or three months. And uh, now he's going to rise up quickly through the ranks. That doesn't mean he's necessarily going to win this fight, but I am very impressed with him. Anything can happen at Slap Fight Championship. And if the Mexicutioner can eat this slap, he does have a chance to win the fight. Here's your wind up. It's very quiet here. This is a this is a questionable situation here. It doesn't look like the executioner is quickly stepping to the barrel. In fact, he's he's standing back a few feet, thinking about it. The executioner has his sons in attendance tonight. I can see them surrounding the platform. They are jazzed up, and I'm not sure if they're jazzed up because they're enjoying watching their father get slapped in the face or if they think he's doing well. I'm not sure, but I'd love to know. All right, here he comes. He's back in it. We are in round seven of a scheduled 10-round fight. Okuma 915 on your right and the Mexicutioner on your left. It's El Paso, Texas versus Branson, Missouri tonight at Slap Fight Championship. Okay, and it looks like the medical team's gonna have a quick conversation with the executioner. Clearly there's something going on with his nose. I don't know if he feels like his nose is broken or if maybe he's just uh, got a nosebleed. I didn't see any strike that would have potentially broken the nose, but again, I'm, I'm not as close to the action as the officials. Our medical team is led by Roger Bennett. 
I've personally done over a hundred events with Roger Bennett. He's one of the best in the business. And as long as we've had Roger Bennett at platform side, we've not had a single injury at Slap Fight Championship. So a, a heartfelt thank you to Roger for helping keep these slappers safe. Ladies and gentlemen, we may have a winner here. Did the Mexicutioner, oh no. Okay, he's gonna continue. The Mexicutioner thought about it. And now he's going to step back to the barrel. That's a little bit of a surprise. All right, we're in round seven, and I believe he's going to be able to return with a, a slap here. He sure milked that break. All right, here we go. All right, that was a little bit sloppy there. I believe the executioner he hit the barrel. I don't know if that was due to a step. At the same time, Okuma sort of flinched a little, but it might have been because he saw the barrel flying at him. Another conversation by the officials. This is a messy, sloppy fight. We have another stepping violation. Oh, no. The executioner is going to lose another turn here. Oh, that must feel horrible. The officials here for the Slap USA do not play around. They regulate these fights the best they can, and they're very, very strict with these penalties because at the end of the day, it's about each fighter making it home safely. Frank the Tank recently went un under, undergo, he went, uh, excuse me, he underwent a whole bunch of medical testing, and I know they did a brain scan on you, and after 19 fights, what did they find? They didn't find anything. They found nothing. <laughs> oh, that was a flinch by the executioner. Look at him. It's almost like he's... Okay, we've got some more. What a crazy fight. It, it, it almost looks like the executioner is out we on have his a club feet. Warning on Akuma, 919, oh, 915. Okay, Okuma's going to have a clubbing. This is a crazy fight, Frank. I, I don't know that I've seen one like this uh, since the Mexican versus Aloha Samurai or Ricky versus Leadbelt fights. Some of these fights are so hard to call just because of the penalties and. And uh, this one here, I would say we have a clear winner in Okuma 915, providing that he can make it past the 10th round. Just to be clear, though, Frank, you, you underwent a lot of, of uh, medical testing in your last fight. You also had a brain scan. And after 19 slap fights, you have absolutely no residual effects, is what they told you. Am I correct? Yeah. yeah. I've had uh, eye, uh, big eye exams and everything to check facial structure damage and all that kinds of stuff and they said everything was good even after 19 fights it's fantastic that that's a testament to sports slap usa and the way they regulate the fights we really appreciate them their officials are great and they're easy to work with and most of all the slappers are safe here we go we're stepping into round eight here's another slap oh that's gotta suck oh my goodness Holy smokes. I once asked the Bayou Bastard how it felt to get slapped repeatedly like that. He said it feels like a leather belt to the face. I will say uh, these slaps sound a lot like Wolverine slaps too. Yeah, I do feel like Okuma 915 is a great new talent for us here at Slap Fight Championship. But also, let's let's be honest here. We've got a guy here in the executioner. He's a great showman. He's taking some big damage. He's throwing some good slaps. And once he gets his game together, we may see a future for him here as well. But I feel like he's standing here having an inner dialogue with himself, asking what the hell did I agree to tonight? Referee Kyron Bowen. He is sponsored by Sangamon Watches. You can see he's wearing his Sangamon watch now. He's checking the 60-second break, making sure he gets both fighters back to the barrel. Okuma 915 is ready to fight. The executioner. he's just hoping to make it through without taking a nap, I think. This is a big, thick man. He's going to slap in round nine here. Okuma looks like he's in the zone. Here's your windup. Oh, I'm not sure what went wrong here, but that wasn't a great slap. All right, line official Q Davidson. 
He's talking about the feet movement of the Mexicutioner. Lead official Kyron Bowen's making a few comments about the flinching of Okuma. Possible club again, a flinch, but we're going to keep it running. Okay, it seems that neither of those things were enough of a violation to stop the action. Fantastic. Referee Kyron Bowen enjoying this fight. We're in round nine. Okuma, 9-1-5. Oh, another big shot. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. The executioner taking heavy damage. This man refuses to lay down. Super swingy arms. I tell you what, there's a lot of tension in this room here, and I think most of the tension are the fans wondering whether or not the executioner is going to make it to the end of the fight. These slaps sound incredible live. Those of you that would like to see a show live, come and see us at slapfight.live. We make announcements constantly about our shows, where they're going to be held. One, Round 10. Two, three. Okuma feels like he may have flinched on that one. You can definitely see the willpower with the executioner. He's definitely taking a lot of damage, and you can see how much he still wants to continue. Yeah, I would agree with you there. This guy reminds me of your first fight against Zeus. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Back, uh, back at the first event we had, Slap Fight 1, it was years ago. It was in a little bar in southeast Missouri, and uh, Frank showed up. He looked he, he pretty inexperienced guy. He, he won his fights. He looked like a a future star of the sport, but this is what some of those fights look like in the early days. Yeah. All right, round 10, Okuma. Oh, that was definitely a, definitely a flinch by the executioner, caused him to get smacked in the temple. It almost just looks like something smells horrible to the executioner, but that's what his stink face looks like. Look at the swelling on the left side of the executioner's face. We are close to the end of the match. And the executioner has made it through the fire. All the way to the end of the match. I don't think there's any question who the winner is. But we'll wait for the official announcement and judge's decision. The judges are talking about the score. I wonder how that mask is going to feel to the executioner after this fight. Awful lot of chatter between the officials and the judges here. I don't know what the question is. Maybe it's just tallying up all of the penalties. I feel like it's pretty obvious who won this fight. Here we go. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, let's hear it for both of these warriors. <laughs> There you have it, friends. Okuma 915 improving his career record to 3 0, 1 0 at Slap Fight Championship. So I'm coming in here talking a little bit. Now I have a feeling that you, you slapped somebody before because, man, you had right from the get go a lot of power in that slap. Have you been training for this? Not really. So, so what is the, what's the secret, man? Because you're hitting hard. Don't get knocked out. <laughs> it's a good strategy. All right, man, tell me about your name. Okuma, I believe that's Japanese. Uh, Japanese means a uh, large bear. Large bear. All right, so you got a big bear. That's the, that's the secret right there, your paws. All right, man. Well, congratulations. You look good. Fantastic. All right, go there and go celebrate. Yeah! Okuma,
One of these two powerhouse slappers will leave with the American Slap Fighting Championship. The Hulk entered the Armageddon tournament as an alternate, and although he was the smallest competitor at 300 pounds, he entered the bracket in the semifinal, your 2022 Armageddon tournament champion, the Hulk. Okay, the Hulk has had to steady him. He is hurt. Neanderthal wins by TKO. This is a giant man, and we look forward to seeing more from Neanderthal here at Slap Fight Championship. Neanderthal versus Hulk. Last night at the slap fight weigh-ins, Neanderthals tipped the scales at 311 pounds at six foot six. His opponent, number one super heavyweight contender, the Hulk, tipped the scales at 292.3 pounds, 6'3". This is a big man super heavyweight sandwich between the top two contenders, and we will find out tonight who's taking home the vacant super I'm heavyweight the title. I'm here tonight to fight the Hulk. Uh, we had a couple fights in MMA previously. Um, kind of new to the sport. I'm here to slap fighting tonight and walk away with the title. Neanderthal. Never thought we'd meet at the barrel, but uh, been adversaries for a long time. But this is my belt. I'm coming to take it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have two fights left. But in order to let those tournament competitors have a little bit more time to recover, we are going to bring out the main event of the evening. This is for the Slap Fight Championship Super Heavyweight title. We're introducing the first opponent. He is fighting out of Fredericktown, Missouri. He weighed in at 311 pounds. He is And there he is, Neanderthal. He's the friendly giant. Neanderthal, six foot six, 311 pounds. And this man can slap, Frank. In his first fight, he fought a man named Homewrecker. Homewrecker had a lot to say before the fight, but with the first two slaps, he put Homewrecker on his ass. And with the third, he ended the fight. Champion out of Bloomfield, Missouri. 
Murray, fighting from Team Hulk, weighing in at 293 pounds, he is the Hulk! And this is one of the most popular fighters at Slap Fight Championship, the Hulk. The Hulk is a former decorated MMA champion. He's from Bloomfield, Missouri, which is just right up the road here. Six foot three, 292 pounds, and that's because the Hulk is on his way down to heavyweight, where he hopes to take the heavyweight title as well. Tonight, he'll be facing Neanderthal, and let me tell you, these two men have history. They fought two times as mixed martial artists, and tonight they meet at the barrel for the first time. We're gonna take it down to the barrel to lead official Kyron Bowen with a quick rules meeting in the coin toss. All right, folks, let's take a look at the rules of slap fight. First off, no clubbing. All competitors must land their strikes with an open hand. The heel of the hand may make contact, but cannot extend past the chin. Next, no stepping. Feet must be planted shoulder width apart, and there can be no pivoting or stepping when striking. And finally, no flinching. Small reactions are allowed, but any movement that affects the power of the strike is a foul. All right, friends, while we were away, the Hulk lost the coin toss he's going to have to take a, a slap from a neanderthal and i remember at the last show the announcer was talking to neanderthal about the size of his hands and he referred to them as mitts and you can just take a look at it huge huge hands they're going to completely cover the hulk's face oh i'm sorry are they just going to headbutt i'm not so sure why neanderthal has his hands behind his back but i do think he's going to slap first Two very intimidating slappers, both from the state of Missouri. Look at the size of the hand on Neanderthal. It's like a, it's almost like a frying pan. One, two, oh my gosh. And the Hulk eats it and smiles. Now, Frank, you fought the Hulk. What does that feel like when you slap him and he just smiles at you like that? It's pretty intimidating, especially when he gets angry. And you see the expression on his face after you hit him. And then yeah. you're like, I have to get hit back by this. Yeah, he's a, he's a very intimidating guy. I know him personally in, in real life. And this is an intimidating guy in every room he steps in. Here, let's see what the Hulk has for Neanderthal. Round one. Neanderthal eats it, but he definitely felt it, Frank. Holy smokes. Wow. Tears rolling down the, the right eye of Neanderthal. It's a pretty common reaction to getting slapped. Now, I do not believe Neanderthal would withdraw from the fight, but I will say that I know a lot of slappers that would have gone down from that slap. Neanderthal has one minute. Neanderthal has one minute to return to the barrel after clearing the cobwebs. And it looks like he's going to take every second of that break. Both of these guys with impressive wins in their last outing. The Hulk beating legendary slapper Frank the Tank by decision. Neanderthal absolutely flattening home record. Round two. a seat oh my the medical team is immediately to the platform the Hulk has 60 seconds and Neanderthal takes a knee fist bumps a couple of fans right now it's all about the Hulk can he return to the barrel or will we have a new super heavyweight champion in Neanderthal the Hulk's gonna take a few seconds here and consider The medical team's gonna have a quick conversation with the Hulk, make sure he's all there. We've seen him knocked down before, Frank. We've seen him return to the barrel. I cannot imagine he would quit, but that was a devastating slap by Neanderthal. It definitely was, but I think he's gonna continue. My gosh. 
He's definitely got some heart. Now we have seen Hulk get knocked down. In fact, in your fight, you slumped him over the barrel and he came back to knock you down at the end of the fight. So we do know that he has recovery power. What we don't know is how many rounds can Neanderthal take punishment from the Hulk. All right, the break is over. The Hulk is back. And here we go, round two. Oh my gosh, Neanderthal eats another slap from the Hulk. My gosh, Neanderthal is a monster. The Hulk's back to the barrel, ready to take a slap. Looks a little bit concerned, but I think we've seen that look on his eyes before, in his eyes before, and watched him pull the fight out. And I'd like to mention, these are not gentle slaps from the Hulk either. These things hurt. Yeah, these are big, big guys. We've got to, oh, look at this. We've got 600 pounds at the barrel. The super heavyweight title is on the line. The Hulk is one of the most popular fighters at Slap Fight Championship, but Neanderthal has quickly risen to the top of the pack and the fans love him as well. The top of round three, Neanderthal is going to take the first slap here. He's checking his placement. And here comes the windup. Oh, no! The Hulk almost falls off of the platform. That's two knockdowns. The Hulk looks dazed and confused. Doctor is already to the platform. Neanderthal takes a knee. Friends, this fight may be over. I don't know that we've seen more impressive super heavyweight slaps in years, Frank. Yeah, this is definitely one of the best that I've ever seen. Neanderthal is just a different breed of slapper. You know, Frank, I, I know that you have a, a relationship with both of these fighters, and one of the things that sticks out to me about Neanderthal is what a kind-hearted uh, person he is and how he, he's always helping people. It's amazing to see him doing this kind of damage like this. Look at his eyes. You can tell he's concerned about his friend. I think the Hulk's about finished here. It, it just doesn't seem like he's going to stand back up and continue. The Hulk does not like to lose, but he's also, uh, he, he's aware that sometimes it's better just to live to fight another day. The medical team still at the platform. The Hulk's going to get back to his feet. Whether or not he's going to continue is, is a mystery. Oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. Now, that's two knockdowns. Two knockdowns. If Neanderthal was to drop Hulk again, that would be a technical knockout, and Neanderthal would become the champion. But we learned in, in the Hulk's last fight, never count out the Hulk. The Hulk has the ability to turn the fight around at any point with big, big power, and I can't imagine that that's not his plan tonight. The Hulk is going to continue in his head slap. The people here in Osage Beach, Missouri love the Hulk. The people around the world love the Hulk, but these are his people in his home state, and he's going to put on a show. Here we go. Oh, that one made a dent. Oh, and Neanderthal just flexes on the Hulk and steps right back to the barrel. A little bit of road rash on the left side of the neck of the Hulk. You know, I would like to point out, too, just watching this from a different angle, the Hulk definitely looks like he has built his power for this fight. Yeah, I think uh, I think so too. I've, I've noticed he's got a, a little bit of extra extra muscle and about 25 pounds less fat. So this guy's definitely been training, but he's making a move down to heavyweight, and he is approximately uh, 25 pounds away. Which, you know, with the Hulk, that's what is that a bowel movement? Look at Neanderthal, the back of his head looks like a pack of hot dogs. 
but both of these guys are super competitive and whether the Hulk has the super heavyweight or the heavyweight and wants to drop down, he will definitely be great at both divisions or whichever one he chooses. Agreed, agreed. I, I believe this is this is a fantastic fight, but I do not think this is the way most of the fans saw this fight going. Neanderthal talking a little trash and laughing in the face of the Hulk. We know it's a good natured Neanderthal, such a good guy, but this is a highly competitive slap fight. Look at this monster. Here's the wind up, round four. Oh man, Hulk stays on his feet. Wow. We have got a fight on our hands, ladies and gentlemen. Holy smokes. Wow. We are in round four. The Hulk took that one. I don't know if that necessarily means that Neanderthal's power is starting to decline or if maybe the Hulk is just starting to get in the zone. Either way, we are in the fourth round of a 10-round title fight at Slap Fight Championship. The winner of this match will become the American Slap Fighting Champion. This is definitely one of the things I noticed when I fought Hulk is that even though I knocked him down twice, he continued to almost get stronger as the fight went on. Yeah, it seems like that might be what's happening here as well. The Hulk is such a tough guy. I once watched him break his finger all the way sideways in a, in a, in a cage fight and reset it himself during the fight and continue. Oh my goodness. Neanderthal felt that one. Yeah, it was a great fight. I was watching the Hulk. He, he uh, punched the guy and the guy broke his finger. It was sitting at sort of an L shape. It was sticking completely to the side and and the, uh, the doctor said he was gonna call the fight and the Hulk said, no, 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 hold on. And he broke the finger, put it back in place and won the fight. Y'all never forget that. I've seen hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of, of cage fights and mixed martial arts fights, but that was one of the coolest things I've ever seen. And now he's at Slap Fight Championship and I was so happy when he signed the Hulk is yet to hold a title in slap fighting, but he has been at the top of the pack for about six months now, and this is his opportunity to take home the gold. Neanderthal wants it. He's 0-2 against the Hulk in combat sports, and he wants this win and this title tonight badly. And you can tell by his fancy new haircut. halfway through the match, it's round five. One, two, three. Oh my goodness, oh, oh. And you can see the corner man dancing around. That's because at Slap Fight Championship, if your corner man steadies you, it counts as a knockdown. So I'd like to give a shout out. <laughs> I'd like to give a shout out to the corner man there for not screwing up and touching the Hulk. That would have cost him the match. So shout out to Melvin Bolito, undefeated Puerto Rican kickboxer and one of the best corner men in the league. The Hulk loves to put on a show. His bell is rung, but he's still playing to the crowd. Neanderthal with a very serious look on his face. I can tell he knows that he's close to winning this belt. It's been a couple of rounds since he's dropped the Hulk though and I'm wondering if his power is diminishing. All right, he's gonna take a knee here inexplicably. I wonder if that means he's having some nerves. No, okay, here we go. The Hulk winding up. This is round five. Bottom of round five with the Hulk. One, two, three. Oh, that was the best slap of Hulk's night. Neanderthal feeling it. I could be wrong, Frank, but it does look like the Hulk may be chopping Neanderthal down here. I don't think you're wrong. It's like chopping down a 
big tree. Yeah, it's a, that's a big, big guy. He's by far the largest guy we've had at Slap Fight Championship. But look at him, he's staring at the Hulk and smiling at him as if to say, look, I'm still here, brother. These competitions take place on two and a half inches of padded EVA foam flooring. And the Hulk, as an MMA fighter, just feels more comfortable barefoot on these mats. So you can see there's a difference in the height here, but it's a much more, uh, it's much more of a difference because the Neanderthal has on shoes and the Hulk is barefoot. Now, typically there would be about three inches of difference in their height, but it looks like there's four to five inches tonight. The Hulk is in the zone, Frank. He yes, loves he to is. fight. Ready. This guy loves to fight. When he gets finished fighting, he likes to just fight. And after that, he fights. All right, here we go. Round six, Neanderthal winding up. And the Hulk. Oh, that's going to be a technical knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a new super heavyweight champion, Neanderthal. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Now, of course, fighter safety is, is most important here at Slap Fight Championship. So we're going to just make sure that the Hulk is OK before announcing the winner. But I cannot believe what we just saw. That is an incredible win for Neanderthal. And Neanderthal will now be a target for super heavyweights all over the country. Always great sportsmanship at Slap Fight Championship, but in particularly, excuse me, particularly, always good sportsmanship between these two competitors. And look at the face of Neanderthal. He is now the American super heavyweight slap fighting champion. And I'm so proud of this guy because that was an incredible win. I can see the Hulk's going to see the medical team. Let's go down to the barrel. How's that a super heavyweight champion? I don't think I've uh, ever won something so nice in my life. I'm, I like it. Well, you earned it, brother. And you know what? This this wasn't the first time you guys met. You've never slapped each other like uh, that, have you? Yeah, so he's beat me twice uh, by decision in the MMA. So. In MMA fight, so now you got, is this more your, your style, you think? And they were both for titles as well, so yeah. Right on. Okay. Well, you guys obviously have a, a backstory. You have a, a kinship and a respect for each other in here. I really love seeing that. And but man, congratulations. That was uh, that was amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Neanderthal.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have one more fight on this incredible Slap Fight Championship 21 heavy hitters card, but we have a new development backstage. Bulldozer has informed event promoters that he cannot continue and he is going to withdraw from the tournament. With Magni winning the first fight and withdrawing, Bulldozer winning the second fight and withdrawing, that means we now have our two non-winners stepping into the finals to face each other in the match that I wanted to see all along. It's going to be the bouncer versus effing full freak, and that fight's going to happen in one minute. So ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourself for the biggest man meat sandwich that we've had at Slap Fight Championship in well over a year. There he is, folks. It's effing full freak. He just got word about 20 minutes ago that his opponent could not continue. Effing full freak was elated. He cannot wait to get up here and compete. There he is, ladies and gentlemen. Five foot nine, super heavyweight. You don't see a lot of those. We've seen some guys have some. Good, good power at five foot nine and over 300 pounds, but sometimes rotation is hard. And introducing his opponent, let's give him a big welcome back, the Bouncer! And the Bouncer was just as excited. I actually ran backstage just now and I said, hey, I asked the Bouncer, I said, hey, how you feeling? He said, great. I said, you want to fight again? He said, let's go. The Bouncer just found out just a few minutes ago he had a quick conversation with the doctor, and now he is in the zone and ready to fight full frequency at the barrel. I'm excited about this fight. I never thought we'd see these two guys going at it, but I'm glad. I hope for it. This fight will determine the number one contender for the championship super heavyweight first contender. So we have now Full Freak against the Bouncer. Let's go! All right, guys, we're going to go to the barrel here with our lead official, Kyron Bowen. He's going to have a quick rules meeting with our competitors. And then we'll toss the coin to see who slaps first. The corner man for Full Freak is inserting the cotton in his ear. All of our competitors wear cotton inside their ears to protect their eardrums from damage. It takes roughly 32 pounds of cotton to fill the ear canal of full frequency. And here comes the coin toss. All right, the bouncer wins the coin toss. He's going to slap first. The bouncer with big, big power. Neither man brought their neck to the fights tonight. Here we go. One, two, three. Oh, we had a little bit of a club and a little bit of a flinch. We'll see which one the officials thought was the dominant penalty here, dominant violation. Lead official Kyron Boeing having a quick conversation with line official. And we have a clubbing warning. The bouncer will receive one warning for clubbing. If he clubs again, he will lose a turn. Two big, big men. Full frequency, full frequency with the wind up. Round one. And you can tell by the sound of that shot that that was also a club. So basically what we have here is the beginning of a nice street fight. Our lead official is going to have a conversation with these guys. He does have the ability to call an so immediate penalty. A clubbing and a stepping warning on full free. Like I said, he does have the ability to call an immediate penalty if he thinks the violation is intentional. Clearly, these violations are not intentional, but he did issue two warnings that time to Full Freak.
Top of round two. And a fantastic slap from the bouncer. Probably the best slap that we've seen him deliver. And it was the first time that we've seen any sign of weakness from Full Freak. We have a stepping warning. Oh, no. On the, bouncer. the bouncer again with a violation. All right, it seems that the right heel of the bouncer has lifted. You cannot lift your foot, pivot your foot. All right, the bouncer's gonna take his cowboy boots off. I have to say, that's gonna be a little bit of a, a benefit for Full Freak. Now he's got about a, an extra inch here. Here we go, Full Freak's having to reach really far to get the placement. Here's the windup. Oh my! Okay, we're checking the replay here, and it looks like there may be another stepping violation. Oh, no. Okay, that's the second violation for Full Freak, so it looks like we're going to have a problem here. He's going to, he's going to lose a turn. There will be no third-round slap for Full Frequency. I think we may have another violation here. I saw the barrel move, but I'm not in a we position. We have a stepping violation. Oh. Loss of turn. Here we go again. I'm just going to tell you now that yeah, even though this is a number one contender fight, no matter who the winner of this fight is, the promoters have decided that they will not immediately challenge for the title. Both of these men, if they are the winner of this fight, will have to compete once again at Slap Fight Championship before being given a shot at the title. And the reason for that is that this fight is a mess, Frank. Yeah, both of these guys are new experiences and they have quite a bit to learn about the fouls and everything and the ways to throw strikes. Yeah, it's a dangerous sport, especially when you're talking about six, 700 pounds a man. Let's see what happens here. Round four. Okay, now it sounded to me like the bouncer just said another club, and now Kyron is saying he doesn't know necessarily if that was a club, so they're gonna check here. We have a clubbing violation, full freak. Full freak with the club. Well, he's now going to lose a turn, and the bouncer's going to have two in a row. This is one of the things that happens in American slap fighting. We so heavily regulate the fights that sometimes there are a lot of penalties. But what that does is that keeps the competitors on their toes and shows them that the challenge is not necessarily just to knock out your opponent. The challenge is also to keep the strikes clean and the techniques clean. And so tonight what we're witnessing here with this super heavyweight tournament is the birth of a couple of great super heavyweights. In fact, we've seen four great super heavyweights tonight but none of them had a clean fight. So we're gonna have to take these guys back to the woodshed before they're able to step onto the big stage. All right, Bouncer's gonna check his placement here. Here's your windup. Oh, and again, it looks like Full Freak has, has flinched again. He doesn't believe like he has, but lead official Kyron Bowen is telling him that he lifted his shoulder and he, and he moved his chin. And I, and I think that's just one of the things that happens when you have traps without the neck. You have to be very, very careful with that. You know, JT, we this kind of reminds violation. me of the uh, that's just, that's, fight that with so um, Leadbelt and Ricky when Bayou Bastard when okay. they first fought. It, you get those jitters and it just makes some of the strikes just you don't know how to throw them or where to throw them. Yes, sir. Yeah, I remember that fight. It was... Uh, it was Ricky versus Leadbelt, the most penalties in history. There we go, we're back in it now. Fantastic slap from the bouncer. Good reception from Full Freak. And we're back in the slap fight game. Yeah, I remember that fight between uh, the Bayou Bastard and uh, Leadbelt Chapman, and it was such a crazy fight because even though nobody was hurt, there were so many reckless strikes that it took us about 10 minutes to determine who the winner was. And of course, the winner was the Bayou Bastard, and and uh, obviously the Bayou Bastard has now gone seven wins and three losses in professional slap fighting. He has recreated himself as a student of the game, and I know he's recently signed with your team, Frank. 
Absolutely, he did. And so did you prepare him for this uh, this next fight coming up, his title fight? Yeah, I've worked with him quite a bit, and we've worked on penalties and a lot of the stuff of way to, the ways to throw strikes and be more accurate so he can get less penalties and win more fights. You know, Ricky has shared with me that he was unhappy with the way that he had started some new flinching techniques. He didn't like the way that it felt, and the fans weren't happy with it. And since Ricky is essentially America's sweetheart, He's decided to clean that up, and I believe that one of the reasons he came to you, Frank, was to help him with those penalties. Yeah, I believe that was. Um, he definitely had a lot of questions and a lot more that he could learn. One, two, three. All right, another good slap. You know, everybody loves Ricky. I'm proud of Ricky myself. And uh, when you see the Slap Fight 22 new era card, you'll see Ricky in his first main event fight. It's also his first championship fight, but ironically, he'll be facing one of the most clean fighters in the game, Monkey Wrench. And second to you, Frank, Monkey Wrench has the most fights without a violation in slap fight history. That is definitely a rare thing for, especially with as many fights as he's had. I'm looking forward to that fight. I wish you guys luck, Frank, but you've got a, you've got a heavy task with Ricky if you can reel him in and keep him clean. Full frequency, round seven. Oh, no! That was a clean slap. I don't know if there was a step. Oh, he lifted his foot. I just, he looked over at Hugh Davidson. Oh, no. Full Freak looked over immediately at the line uh, official and said, was that clean? And the official said, no, you lifted your foot. You know, a lot of these guys, they train, but there's not an official staring at their feet when they're throwing slaps at home or in the gym. And it, it's very, very difficult to keep your feet planted during a slap fight. It will lose a fight for you. And I've seen that many, many times. Now, Jesse's, Jesse the bouncer is talking to his corner man. They're having a very serious conversation and Jesse's complaining of some neck pain and some cheek pain. He's got 25 seconds left in his break. It looks like he's gonna step back to the barrel, but definitely he's feeling these strikes and more importantly, these clubs from Full Freak. Full Freak is a crazy person. Uh, he's gonna go all the way to the 10 rounds unless he takes a nap and he will not be uh, tapping out of any of these fights. He told me that himself and he asked me if he could sign with Slap Fight Championship with a win tonight. Uh, honestly, I think that's probably something that we're gonna look into because Full Freak is an incredible slapper, an incredibly resilient man. He just gotta stop moving his feet. Look at the size of the traps on both of these competitors. Here we go. Oh my goodness, another big, big shot. Okay, now they've called we him for stepping. stepping violation my gosh. By the, bouncer. Awesome round. the officials have called another stepping violation on the bouncer. At this point in the match, both the bouncer and Full Freak have removed their shoes completely. They're doing everything they can to pull in these violations because at this point, the fight belongs to the guy with the least amount of penalties. This is round nine of a 10 round fight. I couldn't tell you, Frank, who's ahead on the scorecards here. What's your opinion? Honestly, I have no idea. We're to a point now where the penalties are actually canceling each other out. This fight is a total mess. I like fights like this. It keeps the officials on their toes, but I have to tell you, these guys are probably beside themselves with frustration. Here we go, round nine, full freak. I just noticed something. I noticed that uh, the bouncer did not put his hands behind his back to receive that slap. He had his hands on his hips. I don't know if he realizes it, but that is not allowed because it engages your traps and it allows you to somewhat block the shots. Uh, so I, I can see his corner man is now telling him that he got away with that one, but he's gonna have to keep those hands behind his back for this last slap.
Again, the bouncer is a retired bouncer. He's got many, many battles in bar rooms across the country. And Full Freak is a retired BMXer. And you know, to be honest, I would have known that by looking at him. I don't think I even needed to mention that. Full Freak versus the bouncer is a surprise matchup. I'm so glad we're getting to see it. But for those of you at home that are aspiring slappers, you've got to take a look at how this fight is going. Sometimes you can have all the power in the world and the best chin in town, but if you can't keep your feet straight, you may lose to violation. All right, these last two slaps are gonna show us a lot. Here we go, wind up. Oh! Crazy shot. 15 pounds of cotton just flew out of the opposite ear, a full freak. Full Freak has one last opportunity to score here. If he doesn't drop the bouncer, we're going to go to the judges' scorecards for a decision. Here's your windup. Final slap. Oh! Ladies and gentlemen, Full Freak! The bouncer goes down hard. Oh my! The medical team's having a look at the boxer, excuse me, the bouncer. I've got to be honest, he didn't bounce. His eyes are open, he's having a conversation with his corner man and the medical team. Full Freak has taken a knee. Full Freak is very excited, but he's trying to be respectful. The bouncer, I believe this fight may be over by knockout. If he can get to the barrel within the 60 seconds, we can go to the judges' scorecards. But that's only if the doctor decides that he is able to continue to the decision. Oh my gosh. Here at the Inn at Grand Glaze Event Center, that sounded like a shotgun going off. And a 320 pound man hit the floor. I've got to hand it to the Sports Slap USA officials. This was a very difficult fight to regulate, and I believe they've done a fantastic job. I believe this is a fight won by knockout but I would be curious to see who was the winner according to the judges. I hope we can find that out here. What a fantastic final fight for Slap Fight 21 heavy hitters. I cannot believe the amount of big men we have brought into the league this week, and I am happy with literally every one of them. Frank, you got your work cut out with this stepping. You're gonna have to take these four guys and put some time in with them, but uh, which one of these guys do you think is the standout? We've got Magni, Full Freak, the bouncer and bulldozer. Well, I think Magni, in terms of penalties, actually did the best out of these four guys. But I mean, from what I've seen from just one fight, it's gonna it's gonna take some work. All these guys need to practice on a lot of different things, but they all have different techniques and the ability to beat each other. Yeah, it's a very interesting mix Ladies of guys. Ladies and gentlemen, there Let's was listen. a step violation on that last slap. Oh, no. So that means we get another slap. Oh, my gosh. Okay, if you're watching at home, this is what has just happened. There was a stepping penalty. Once we look at the replay, full freak step. Even though this is the so end of the match, the bouncer, the bouncer will receive Black one final end. slap. This will be round 11 only for the bouncer. This is a big opportunity for the bouncer whose bell has been rung. Here we go. Two, three. Oh, oh no. I'm so sorry, but I believe that may have been a club. Okay, they're looking at the tape here. Wow. I'll tell you right now, as the CEO of Slap Fight Championship, I can tell you that neither of these men will be facing Neanderthal for the super heavyweight title in their next fight. 
but the winner of this tournament is to become the new number one contender. So we will make sure and honor that, but they will need a little bit more time at the barrel before going for the title. Oh my goodness, the bouncer pulls it out. Winner most likely due to excessive penalties, Jesse the bouncer from Team Okuma. Wow. All right. Man, how how you feeling? You, you stable enough to stand oh, here for yeah. a couple minutes? Feeling good now. Okay, right on. Feeling good that you got the W? Yes, sir. Right on. Well, tell me, you know, I don't I like that fashion statement. You came out with the cowboy boots and the green sweats, but I think it was affecting your your stepping, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a little bit. I thought I'd be more comfortable cuz I wear them every day, but it kind of worked against me. Yeah, those heels came up. As soon as you took them off, I think it got a little bit better for you. Yeah. But I think you still need to recover, but you can also celebrate while you recover. Congratulations, ladies and gentlemen, your winner, the bouncer, number one contender. Congratulations, man.